the plasmoid unification model. Molten Sea Arc Atomic Reconstruction Technology, or MSART. Plasmoids are donut or toroidal shaped clusters of net protons or net electrons that, once captured and placed into a toroidal orbit, are capable of absorbing, storing, and releasing enormous amounts of energy present within their self generated and structured electromagnetic containment field. Plasmoids, in effect, function as an atomic battery that can be self-charging due to their ability to convert matter into available clean energy. Plasmoids by their unique geometry cause a consequential electromagnetic containment field to generate a zero point naturally and casually, without much effort, and have the ability to convert the nuclear mass of protium atoms into energy. The Plasmoid Unification Model PUM, posits that plasmoids are epoch-making and that knowledge of them has been hidden in plain sight for centuries. This PUM slide rule reveals the algorithmic relationships between life's elements critical to mankind's existence and development. It starts with protium H, which has a melting point of minus 259.2 degrees Celsius and is the most abundant element in our solar system. Protium determines the 25,920 great year frequency of our solar system. The resonant frequencies of all others can then be calculated when 25,920 years is reduced from years to days, hours, and seconds. The PUM is evidence that the universe is an intelligent design. That design is in perfect octave harmonic resonance with itself. Therefore, all of creation, from galaxies, to planets, to elements, all resonate in unison with a collective chord referred to by our ancestors as above so below. This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. Its origin dates to sometime between 200 CE and 800 CE and is attributed to an ancient document called the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. The concept, that which is below corresponds to that which is above, and that which is above, corresponds to that which is below, to accomplish the miracles of the one thing. This is interconnected with an energy web, the 24 components and laws of which are all based and governed on the same 16 sector torus plasmoid precepts shown. The concepts and ruling principles of the PUM can, and have been, applied to make energy to matter and matter to energy conversions. When applied to the modern hydrocarbon-powered internal combustion engine, PUM technology removes exhaust toxic waste products and increases the engine power output by transforming waste energy back into fuel. Plasmoids employed in conjunction with the plasmoid toroidal implosive turbine provide a new novel matter to energy, an energy to matter propulsion device for water, land, air, and space travel. This unified theory of matter and existence has been applied to practical technology. Recently, Malcolm Bendel has developed what is called the Plasmoid Thunderstorm Generator. It is called this because Malcolm brilliantly designs the engine to replicate how nature utilizes opposing hot and cold counter-rotating forces within a containment to reproduce a thunderstorm in a bottle. To explain the basics of how the Bendel engine works we begin by imploding a sphere. Then putting the North Pole, which is rotating anti-clockwise, against the South Pole, which is rotating clockwise, you create a monopolar point on the equatorial plane. Segmenting the imploded sphere into eight planes creates 16 peripheral points which, when viewed in cross-section reveal the infinity symbol. In order to calculate the resonant frequency of a shape, you must first calculate the sum of its internal angles. To calculate the resonant frequency of an imploded sphere we must produce the sum of the internal angles contained within all eight planes. All physical shapes vibrate at the sum of their internal angles, which are determined by the base angle of 22.5 degrees and its octaves. The angle between the eight planes and the zero-point equatorial center also determines the location of the knot and nodes on the Fibonacci phi curve on the pi surface. This connects and defines the placement of all the elements. To paraphrase Jordan from Alchemical Science, the air is distributed into the water chamber via a porous air stone, which produces micro-bubbles, around 0.5 micron, from the bottom inlet which is composed of ionized air that passes through a tube of UV light. 
These micro bubbles are sucked up through steel wool contained between two mesh screens using the vacuum pulses from the engine, shown here in this diagram. The stainless steel filter which the micro bubbles pass through act as a catalyst to atomize and vaporize the ionized water filled with micro bubbles, which is then pulled up as gas or vapor into the top chamber during the vacuum phase of the engine. According to Malcolm Bendel, micro bubbles are necessary to ensure the bubbles remain symmetrical during the process in the next step where they collapse. Each vacuum phase produces around 7,000 micro bubbles. During the reverse piston phase, the vacuum is released from the plasmoid generation chamber and the chamber turns into a pressure chamber. During the pressure phase of the engine, the micro bubbles are forced to collapse into themselves. What the bubbles are experiencing is a change in their state of matter, from a liquid state, into a gas state and finally into a plasma state, simply by structuring how the ionized bubbles implode when put under pressure. The collapse of the symmetrical micro-bubbles forms a toroidal magnetic self-contained field which contain the plasma in the form of a plasmoid. Once the bubble pops, the plasmoid is left due to its self-contained magnetic field sustained by its geometry. The plasmoids then gain in size due to their tendency to draw in and convert the available water vapor surrounding them. The molecular and atomic bonds are disassociated as the vapor passes through the toroid. This splits the water into their base elements hydrogen and oxygen and the plasmoids increase from the size of 10 to the power of minus 12 microns up to 100 microns. The plasmoids then pass into the thunderstorm generator. The thunderstorm generator is essentially a sphere, within a sphere, attached to a tube, which hot and cold gas is passed through at specific counter-rotating angles within the sphere to create a powerful vortex. The cold ionized plasmoid vapors are pulled into the thunderstorm generator at a temperature of minus 86.3 degrees as they exit the generator. The hot exhaust is introduced at a counterclockwise angle to the plasmoid vapor to produce a powerful vortex. The opposing vortexes of hot carbon exhaust gases and the cold water vapor that is dense with plasmoids collide, reproducing a thunderstorm in a bottle, where slight differences in temperature can cause powerful storms. The column of water being subjected to alternating vacuum and pressure pulses sourced by the normal action of a piston within an internal combustion engine, alternatively generate and collapse the bubbles. These are the same naturally occurring forces of nature that produce the enormous power of a thunderstorm or cyclone. Cool moist plasmoid enriched air moving into the engine, structured using resonant spheres and cylinders of different diameters, interacts with hot dry air encapsulating it as it moves out in the opposite direction from the engine. This releases enough energy at an atomic level within the exhaust stream to fundamentally alter its composition, eliminating toxic chemical wastes such as carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, hydrocarbons, and other toxic compounds. The exhaust's net positive ions, which are also bad for life, are replaced with net negative ions within the exhaust. Simultaneously, within the vacuum, imploding into the engine together, the MSART plasmoids and water vapor act to both disassociate the water into hydrogen and oxygen. The plasmoids alone, once reaching their effective charge density, create a viable singularity zero point, due to charging received by the thunderstorm tornad dissociating the hydrogen into its component electron and proton. This atomic and molecular fuel is fed back into the engine to add and enhance the explosive force of the normal hydrocarbon fuel. Other elements that contain neutrons within the imploding vacuum stream are unaffected by the forces applied by the plasmoids, as they are not powerful enough to act on the nucleus. Therefore, producing no nuclear byproducts. What this does is turn the exhaust into toxin-free oxygen. The underlying principle of Malcolm Bendel's unified field theory is that all elements are plasmoids and that all those elements are controlled by charge density. Therefore, making charge density the only relevant characteristic when considering zero matter, time, light and matter. Jordan from Alchemical Science is an independent researcher who has personally verified the engine's authenticity, and according to him on his channel, which is linked to in the description below, there is a slight smell of burnt air but almost no sense of carbon emissions produced when putting your nose up to the exhaust. 
The brilliance of Bendel's design isn't just in the ability to adapt already functioning carbon-producing engines into super-efficient oxygen factories, it is in the simplicity of its engineering. Further proof that the greatest science is based on nature, the universe's most efficient energy machine. Much thanks to Jordan from Alchemical Science and the Strike Foundation which I have linked in the description below. I highly recommend anyone interested in learning more about plasmoids, sacred geometry, or obscure, esoteric science to go over and subscribe to Jordan's YouTube channel, Alchemical Science. The truth is out there. These are the doors, all you have to do is walk through them. For more videos like this, put a like on our video, and subscribe to our channel Beneficence TV. Beneficence is beautiful.